My name is Margaret Sakaja. I'm the Executive Director of the Human Rights Center Uganda. Human Rights Center Uganda was established in 2008 to look at the situation of human rights defenders in the country. Human Rights Center Uganda does a number of activities which include building capacity for human rights defenders, translating legal documents into local languages which are widely spoken in Uganda, critiquing legislation to ensure that they comply with international standards. We also do uh, annual forums for human rights defenders and networking so that they could be able to work together, share their experiences. We do advocacy, research, and training. Human Rights Center Uganda is pleased to introduce to you this documentary. This documentary is about chapter four of the Constitution. It's about rights and responsibilities of citizens. It's a very important document and it's very important that human rights defenders understand their rights and also their responsibilities. We want to present to you this documentary for you as human rights defenders to disseminate it to your networks, to the citizens at large, and we hope that all other people in Uganda will utilize this documentary as it's important in understanding democratization in the country. Thank you. Enjoy viewing this documentary. Nineteen ninety five marked a milestone in our history, an acknowledgement, the ratification of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and many of those rights were included in Chapter Four of the Uganda Constitution. Amongst the key players who were instrumental in this process included, but were not limited to, Justice Benjamin Adoki, General Kale Kaihora, Honorable Miriam Matembe and retired Justice Mary Maitum. Ugandans have suffered great violation of human rights in the past 30 years. Idi Amin's regime of murder and terror cannot be forgotten. Many innocent people lost their lives and property during the Bush War in the Luwero Triangle. Violation of human rights caused some of the national conflicts that Uganda has experienced. The abuse of basic human rights by Amin resulted in the Liberation War and his overthrow in 1979. And Museveni launched this Bush War because the rights of the people to choose their leaders in a free and fair election had been denied. During the constitution-making process, the people considered the topic of human rights and most important issues which affected them directly and indirectly. Post-independent governments had an appalling record in the area of human rights. The people wanted human rights to be the foundation of the constitution so that it was seen and understood as a human rights document. The Bill of Rights would also be the basis for evaluating the performance of the government. The Bill of Rights in Chapter 4 of the New Constitution is liberal and comprehensive and incorporates all rights and freedoms enshrined in the International Bill of Rights. It declares that fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual are inherent and not granted by the state. The rights and freedoms enshrined in the Bill must be respected, upheld and promoted by all organs and agencies of the government and by all persons. And so these very internationally recognized principles were enshrined in what we now know as the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, which was adopted on the 8th of October 1995. 
And so, these are your rights. These are your human rights. We are all born free with equal rights and dignity. Our rights are not given by the state and must be respected and promoted by the government, its organs and all people. We are all equal before the law and have the right to equal protection under the law. Parliament should pass laws needed to eliminate all forms of discrimination. We all have the right to life. No abortion is allowed except permitted by law. No one shall be arrested or detained except for lawful reasons outlined in the Constitution. When one is arrested, he must be told of the reason, kept in a place allowed by law, and be brought before court within 48 hours. No one shall be tortured or subjected to cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. No one has the right to physically or mentally hurt or torture you, whether by beating or other forms of mistreatment. No one shall be made a slave or held in servitude. No person shall be made to do forced work unless it is work ordered by a competent court in prison necessary for keeping hygiene or maintaining a place of detention. This is my laptop. This is my phone. They are my property. Everybody has the right to own property alone or jointly with others. One's property cannot be taken away except when it is needed for public use, for the defense of the country, public safety, order or to protect public morality or public health. We all have the right to privacy of our bodies, our homes and properties which shall not be unlawfully searched, entered to or interfered with. You have the right to a fair trial. 
no one shall be arrested or put in jail without good reason. You are innocent until proven guilty. We are all unique and have the right to hold opinions, the right to freedom of thought, conscience and belief, freedom of speech and expression which includes freedom of the press and other media. We all have the right to education. You have the right to marry and have a family. The state must take measures to improve the conditions of people who have been disadvantaged because of their gender, age, disability or other historical reason, tradition or custom. Women have full and equal dignity with men and the state must provide facilities and opportunities for the advancement of the welfare and potential of women. All children have a right to know their parents and be taken care of by them or their guardians. All orphans and vulnerable children have a right to special protection by the state. Persons with disability have a right to respect and human dignity.
the state shall take measures to ensure that persons with disabilities realize their full and mental potential. We all have the right to belong to, enjoy, practice, profess, maintain and promote our cultures, cultural institutions, language, tradition, belief or religion, either alone or in association with others. You have the right to choose your government and participate in the affairs of government individually or through elected representatives. You have a right to a clean, healthy and safe environment. You have the right to work and to safe and healthy conditions of work including the right to have rest, leisure and reasonable working hours and holidays with pay. You and I are entitled to enjoy all the human rights and freedoms mentioned in the Constitution and all the other rights not specifically mentioned. Certain rights cannot be derogated from even during a state of emergency. These include freedom from torture, cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment, freedom from slavery or servitude, the right to a fair hearing and the right to an order of habeas corpus. On behalf of the Human Rights Center Uganda, I'd like to thank all the staff that have taken their time to see that this documentary is produced well and to see that it comes out in a quality product. I'd like to especially thank the team that have contributed their time to see that the quality is good. We'd also like to thank Democratic Governance Facility for their financial support that they have given to and see that this project is completed and we have a final product. Lastly, we dedicate this documentary to human rights defenders across the country. We hope that you find this documentary useful in enhancing understanding of the rights in the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. We call upon all Ugandans to watch this documentary 
and contact the Human Rights Centre in case you need further assistance in understanding the rights and responsibilities that have been elaborated in the documentary. Thank you. If you feel your rights have been violated in any way, the Human Rights Centre is here to help. Visit our website at www.hrc.ug for more information.